Serious, what mysteries from the early days of the internet are still unsolved to this day? Death of Philip Taylor Kramer the bass guitarist for Iron Butterfly who became a computer engineer. He was said to have been working on data compression techniques and may have been assassinated, but his death was ruled a suicide. The whole story, and family, are weird. It made the rounds as a favorite early internet conspiracy and then, just disappeared. The Delphi Murders Two teenage girls go on a hike in the woods and are found murdered the next day. Only evidence being the video one of the girls managed to snap right before of a man. No one has been able to come forward with knowledge of who he is and the case remains unsolved. There was that guy in the middle 90s who designed his girlfriend using software. He ended up with something like a mugshot, then posted it, hoping to find her in real life. He swore he was in love with her, this image he had created. He became an immediate laughing stock. I can't locate any links, but I remember one person referring to the girl as chiclet teeth. Anyway, I wonder if the guy ever found her. Just how many sex offenders did I talk to as a 13 slash F slash NC in all those AOL chat rooms? Or was I really just talking to other idiot teenagers? That and what happened to Rotten.com? A young girl went missing or was killed in a certain area and as time passes, on YouTube a old white guy titled the anniversary of the girl's disappearance slash death with the location stares into the camera and is just laughing menacing for quite a while before the video ends with him smiling. 112 Dirtbag I think that's the name of his account or the name of that video. The girl was Maura Murray and her car was found abandoned on State Route 112 in New Hampshire. Lake City Quite Pills Old Reddit user who used to post here in the really old days, before subreddits even I think? Died. Their friend took over their Reddit account for a bit and let Reddit know. Eventually people noticed the user was linked to some site, I think it was porn or something, which in turn contained message logs. These message logs were all pretty cryptic. The logs eventually mentioned holding a service for the dude who died but gave weird requirements like not giving your real name to hotel staff, not being tailed, only American currency and to remain low profile. Stuff like that. People are a bit suspect of this and during the same night this party is meant to be happening some mobster is killed close to the venue of it by hitmen. Website after a while was taken down and all that remains are screenshots of the original logs. Barely Sociable has a vid about the topic on YouTube which will do it far more justice than I have here but it is certainly the oldest thing I know of. I remember that extremely creepy video of a young guy with longish hair and a very odd way of speaking, I think it was a combination of accent and speech impediment, talking about grave robbing and how to prep the remains for sale. I remember specifically him going into great detail into how to properly clean out the skulls so they wouldn't rattle when you shook them. Nobody ever came up with an identity, location, or even a solid answer for who was buying the human remains or why. Anyway, I haven't been able to stop thinking about it for a long time, because last year a man where I live was arrested for doing the exact same thing. He was digging up graves, taking the remains, and methodically cleaning them for sale. Sale to who? For what reason? It literally drives me insane. I saw a mouse getting its pee pee cut off with scissors through a selfish person in discord. Dog with its head slashed and bleeding due to that one Instagram account. Ugandan knuckles. A guy eating a soup and crying, while two Teletubbies were reassuring him. Many more I've blocked out of my memory, can't think of them but I know of so many once I hear something related to them. Wouldn't say early internet but interesting nonetheless. There was a multitude of killers who have posted on 4chan one who asked the question what does slash b slash keep in the freezer? They then proceeded to post pictures of body parts with timestamps to prove it authentication. Another one was, again 4chan, a guessing name of a missing person and provided a freebie which when guessed correctly lead to the coordinates of where the body was buried. Are you shitting me or is that true? Yeah. The coordinates one was originally posted as a thread with a pic of the missing girl and the message if this thread gets trips, I'll tell you where to find her with trips meaning a triplicate number in the post number, e.g. 222, or 777, etc., which was not something you could see ahead of time. Someone made a reply in the thread with trips, and the op replied with GPS coordinates. 
Two days later someone posted a news article from the nearby city with an update about the girl's body being found. 1-800 golf tip 1990 to 2000 and man would count up to 10 and would have a pause somewhere between 5 to 10 and then a jump scare of a screaming, or a strange siren noise, don't call it now it leads to an erotic hotline. The Death Valley Germans, 1996. In short, German family gets lost in Death Valley, car gets found, family never surfaced again. Up until today, they are still missing without a real trace. Edit. As another Redditor has pointed out, they actually found some of the father's bones, at least. Well, Pink Floyd released an album called The Division Bell, and then a character called Publius Angima started to leave clues for fans on message boards, including writing that was found in the cover art, flashing the name in the stadium lights, and multiple cipher slash codes and so on. Eventually, a legal threat that would have stripped away user anonymity on the message board servers ended with Publius Enigma disappearing before the competition or contest could be completed. No one was able to discern what was happening, and, more importantly, Pink Floyd was coy enough about it that no one knew if it was just some genius proto-viral marketing scheme. The identity of the main creator of Bitcoin, many speculations but still no solid proof of who they are exactly just that their Bitcoin wallet remains untouched and there's speculation for that too like they're waiting to dump it when the time's right or has simply lost the code to the wallet. Still interesting altogether. One I remember is something along the lines of cutoffmyfeet.com. I don't think it's still up, but the gist of it was that a dude's feet were paralyzed and he wanted to cut them off so he could get prosthetics. I don't remember much, there are probably better explanations out there. The most mysterious song on the internet, I only know about this mystery because of a series of videos made by Wang, if you don't know what the mystery is about, it's about a song that is visible to the public, but no one knows who made the song, no one even knows the title of the song, this search started in 2007, but wasn't big until 2019 I think. What happened to Chip Shan? She was a South Korean girl that was trapped on her department and streamed 24-7, most of the time she was asleep, she said she was kidnapped by a corrupt police officer that put a tracking chip on her toe, that's why her name is Chip Shan. Last time I checked she was pretty ill and looked pretty bad, if someone could tell me what happened, is she okay? Was all of that an experiment? What about the guy that tried to test his new gas mask and made chlorine gas, and it was absorbed into his skin, and he stopped posting updates? Yeah that I've seen the screen caps of that, it was on the slash k slash 4chan board. His last post had a picture of his skin already badly affected by the gas, and then he never posted again. Not sure if it's real or not but I remember watching a video of a man exploring the catacombs and out of nowhere he just drops the camera and begins to run. I remember there was a video of like a tap dancing bunny girl. It was off-putting BC it seemed like it was filmed with a VHS and one of her legs was bigger than the other I think. If I remember correctly, the last few seconds of the video she slowly walks toward the camera and the music stops. It haunted my existence. I have no idea where I saw it as a kid, or why. I probably wouldn't even want to watch it now due to how it traumatized me as a kid. About 19 years old at college. I stumbled across a website that was filled with masked men killing white people. They, the victims, weren't all Americans, there were Europeans involved. I actually suffered mild PTSD that night. Decided to tell my friends about it in the morning and it was gone. They thought I was making it all up. Elise Liam. She was a young woman whose body was found decomposing in a hotel water tower. What's strange is that nobody knows how she got there as the roof of the hotel is always locked. Even stranger is that the last recording of her was a video of her acting strange on an elevator, it shows her walking into an elevator and waiting for the doors to close, but she keeps peeking out of the elevator as if she was looking for someone following her. The elevator doors for some reason don't close and after a while, she gets off the elevator and was never seen again, until guests started complaining about foul-tasting water, and they found her body when inspecting the tower. <laughs> 